Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You're in the right place. If you're looking to work smarter, not harder in 2020, you're looking to increase your average sale price, you're looking to service your clients better during this uh, unprecedented time. And I'm really excited about today's guest. But before I introduce our guest, don't forget we are part of the, our podcast is part of the Syndicate podcast, where there's some of the top podcasts throughout the industry under one hub. Check it out. Uh, so let's get right into things. My name is Michael Lafito, and when I bring on guests for our podcast, I'm always looking for um, a void, perhaps something that we haven't brought someone on to talk about or a different approach, a different angle. And many times when I do our live trainings, people ask me, hey, Mike, if you were to move to this market not knowing anything, what would you do? And so that's a common question. Or, hey, I'm just starting in luxury. If you had to go back to your, your younger self, Mike, what would you say or what would you do differently? And so this is a topic that resonates with a lot of agents, and that's what we're going to be talking a little bit about. And um, I'm, I'm excited I have – Mar- Maria um, from Keller Williams. She's out in the uh, Silicon Valley area in the Palo Alto, California area. Um, y- are you there? Yes, I'm right here. Well, you, you um, really appreciate we, t- we tried scheduling. You're, you're busy. You're a successful agent. Uh, you and I met in February of this year at the Keller Williams family reunion. You came highly regarded as, as hey, you, you, you need to have her on your show. And uh, you and I got talking at the family reunion, and, and I'm really excited to, to have you on our show. So thank you for uh, blocking off some time. Of course. Thank you. I'm honored. And Well, thank you. And um, so the topic of starting fresh, uh, not having a local database, is something that uh, you lived. Uh, you moved from the Virginia yes. area out to the Palo Alto area, you know, starting yes. from scratch, didn't have a huge database. Um, but before we kind of go into that, t- tell us a little bit about the luxury market in your area. Yeah, um, so the Bay Area luxury market is very unique and exciting. Um, the mix of clients buying these homes is incredibly diverse with plenty of offshore investors, uh, local tech millionaires and billionaires and steady slow well-earning executives moving into the area for work. So there are always plenty of exciting opportunities. Uh, my favorite part about our luxury market is that it spans across pockets all along the Bay Area. It's, so it's not limited to just homes around the downtown core or around the high-tech companies, but rather every 10 to 15 miles, you drive into another luxury pocket. So downtown San Francisco, Hillsboro, and the Portola Valley, Danville, um, and Alamo, Palo Alto, Los Altos, and of course, Atherton, which you know, America's most expensive zip code, according to Forbes. So we have the variety and luxury to fit the lifestyle you want to live. Well, I think that that insight, and, and you've only been in that market for less than three years, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes, I moved out here um, about 2016. Um, yeah, okay. so, and I started doing real estate here in 2017, yes. Uh, good for you. And you just you just rambled off all those areas, and you're very familiar with your local market. Um, t- tell us, is it a buyer's market overall there, or a seller's market? Yeah. So the luxury market here is always a buyer's market. Um, the upper end of it is pretty consistent with the rest of the U.S., where houses above 30 million sell for a few million cheaper than the list price most of the time. But that's the smallest segment of the market. The average luxury market here also sells at or below list price. So um, you don't really end up in scenarios with multiple offers in in that segment either. So therefore, both those segments would be to the buyer's advantage. So the entry-level luxury market is very robust. A listing below, uh, for example, 7 million will likely see multiple offers. And you'll wonder why I would still refer to this as a buyer's market when there is uh, competition amongst buyers for properties. 
And it's because our market in Silicon Valley is rare in which even if you buy a home for 100 k above asking, the house is worth more the following year. So 10 years ago, you could possibly buy an average home in Palo Alto for $1.5 million, but today it's impossible to get a fixer upper single family home for below $2 million. So the buyers always win. Owning a home in this market is the win, and that's what keeps our market dynamic. Oh, man, that's... So entry level, I mean, you're, you're talking multi, multi-million dollars, you know, so many of our listeners, you know, maybe the average sale price is two to 300,000. You know, one of the things, uh, Maria, for our, our course, for our designation, we, we define luxury. It's all, it's all relative. It's not a million dollars and above. It's all relative to the given market. So we define luxury as three times the average sale price for, for that given market. So thanks for sharing with me some of those numbers. Um, mm -hmm. And so you kind of answered that one question with the starting price point for luxury in your market. And, and does that vary from downtown San Francisco to some of those other zip codes? Uh, yeah, it, it varies, definitely. So I would say in Palo Alto, like in, in this market, um, an entry-level luxury property starts at like $3 million, um at this price point. And uh, we... and. Mm -hmm. And, and as far as where that's concerned, we have multiple offers for these listings coming from people looking to buy a nice home in a good school district. And that's very important. Um, yeah. And uh, we don't have room for new construction. So what's already there gets more and more expensive each year. And um, do you want to kind of say something personally on that was because when I moved here, uh, you know, my daughter's 18 now, but she's about to go to college in six months. But, um, you know, I hired an education consultant. And that's how I got familiar with all of these areas. You know, um, I wanted to be put in front of all the director, I mean, the, the directors of all the top schools. And because um, education is something that, you know, I'm not going to compromise in, you know, your kids are like the most important things to you. So, I mean, the most important people to you. So um, sure. what I did is I, I got in front of all the different market school district, and that's why I was able to get acclimated with each area of the peninsula. And um, so when a buyer in different areas come to me and they ask me about, for example, all the areas that I, you know, initially spoke about, um, I know. <laughs> so, yeah. That's great. That's great, which, you know, makes you more of an advisor and a consultant versus, you know, faking it till you make it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. You know, we, we, we're, we're going through some unprecedented times with, with, with Corona and uh, the market and uh, you know, over you know the, the numbers, the vast number of people that are, uh, you know, signing up for unemployment. Uh, we got stimulus. Uh, overall, I mean, do you think 2020 will be more favorable for buyers or sellers? And and, and that's a two-part question. First, in your local market, and then just based on going to these national conferences and having relationships with agents globally, you know, outside of your market. So, do you think overall favorable for buyers or sellers in your market? You know, 2020 has been a showstopper. Corona has caused quite a stir, and our sellers are mostly affluent enough that they can afford to hold their homes and not have to sell. We have seen listings being taken off market as opposed to selling for substantially lower prices. But I do feel we will see a trend towards a buyer's market when all of the chaos settles down and the, all those listings that were taken off market in March will come back to compete with the new listings coming into the market for the first time. So based on what I have seen so far, the luxury market will favor the buyers a bit, but buyers also need to remember that much of the Bay Area luxury market doesn't get desperate to sell. The majority of sellers have the means to hold onto their property and they aren't afraid to do so. So in 2020, buyers can expect to get good deals, but not by landslides. Okay, that's, that's good. And what's, what's your gut tell you based on your referring partners and uh, what you're seeing um, and talking to some of your fellow real estate agents in other markets? You know, um, people are, opt uh, you know, they're optimistic. So, um, you know, and uh, so am I. <laughs> so that's what yeah. I can say right now. Hi, it's Michael Lafito here with a quick break from the podcast. If you are committed to increasing your average sale price and you want to work smarter, not harder, then you want to visit LuxuryListingSpecials.com for more information on the Lux designation along with some free resources. And now, let's get back to the show. Well, you know, from a marketing or lead generation standpoint, um, you know, what is something maybe you're known for from a creativity uh, 
standpoint or just, you know, lead generation? Uh, is there something that, um, mm-hmm. you know, maybe you get asked, this is your first, first podcast, you declined others. Um, so I'm, I'm excited, I'm honored that uh, you took me up on the invite and this is your first, you're doing an amazing job. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but but from like a, a marketing or a lead generation standpoint, you know, is there something that you hang your hat on that you, you don't mind sharing or that di- yes, differentiates yes. you? Yes, absolutely. Yes. So, I mean, I'm going to say a few things about that, you know, and, um, you know, and I wish I could share the secret formula for success in the luxury market. But honestly, the most important thing in the market is to advertise your integrity. The client shopping around for a discount brokerage isn't really a luxury market client. There's simply someone who's, you know, who happened to purchase a home in the luxury market. So the client alert to discount isn't the right client. The client impressed by the bells and whistles of marketing clearly hasn't been shopping around because had they spoken to any, you know, three agents, they will realize we all offer a different flavor if, the, if it's the same product. So the majority of clients want an agent that won't bend the rules, will safeguard their interest and protect their privacy. That's essentially my marketing in a nutshell. So yes, you you still provide this sparkly, shiny marketing material, but you emphasize your personal abilities and the ability to impress past clients enough for them to give you strong referrals, which are the greatest lead generation. So my creativity in lead generation, I would say, is always evolving. And I'll tell you about one unorthodox way I ended up collecting leads recently. Um, I was at an investor conference for an overseas development fund. And I knew there would be lots of investors from various places uh, across the country. So by being there and telling people how I'm always exploring new avenues to invest in, a lot of these people exchanged business cards thinking they could sell me on the project, uh, on the, on the projects uh, they, you know, they invest in. So when I spoke to them, I would tell them about the agent I trust in their region and got some of these client, uh, people to connect to my referral partners. So by thinking outside the box, I was able to generate three referrals that afternoon and also help my referral partners. <laughs> so it's all about oh, building it's relationships. It's a win-win. Absolutely. Absolutely. Got to help each other out. You know, you bring up the, the word referral partners. You know, for those of you that um, might not be sure exact, exactly what um, she's referring to is, you know, having relationships with top agents, high integrity agent, agents across the country. Now, they could even be outside of your brand. If you're with Remax and, and you have a Keller Williams agent that you really like and trust in a certain marketplace or vice versa, you know, the, the key is – you know, when you refer out business, just like a preferred vendor, your inspector, your title company, and, and if they do a bad job by you, you know, word will get out and it's a reflection directly on you. Same thing with referrals. So, you know, building a, a, a trusted uh, referral network is, is really important. Having good relationships with them, masterminding, sharing best practices. You know, I found real estate agents. That's part of the reason that I'm trying to raise the, the bar and, and with this podcast because I found many real estate agents do have a scarcity mindset. And so if an agent knows that you're not in my marketplace, they might show, tip their hand and, and share best secrets more so than if it's an agent in their own office. And it shouldn't be that way, but that's unfortunately, um, you know, the the world we live in. Mm -hmm. Yep, I totally agree with this. So if you were to move to a new state like you did (laughs) from the East Coast to to California, and you were new to that area, uh, what would you do to establish yourself? And what did you do to establish yourself in less than three years in that Palo Alto area? Yeah. So, um, yeah, again, I used to be licensed in Northern Virginia and moved to Silicon Valley without knowing anyone here. The three things I would recommend for anyone would be to associate yourself with people who see the best in you and be willing to put in the hard work to start over. The first thing you have to do is pick out the people who try to distract you. It's so easy to surround yourself with people who pretend to be interested in your success. As a new kid on the block, you get very inquisitive people coming to introduce themselves to you who take up your time simply to get to know you. Do that, but don't get lost in doing that. So focus on establishing your foothold, you know, before getting caught in, you know, caught up in socializing. So one thing you can take to any new market with you is that if an agent has a lot of time to socialize, then that agent doesn't have much work to do. So the second most important thing is to be a part of the local luxury market. 
as an outsider coming in, you can't sit on the sideline and expect people to accept you. You have to live in the market. You have to socialize in the market. You have to interact with that market to be able to sell that market. And this is, number one, why I live in Palo Alto. So it's very important to be a part of the community you're focusing your business around and to be involved. Luxury clients are usually more savvy clients, and they need an agent that actually knows and understands a local market. The fake it till you make it lifestyle doesn't appeal to them, and you lose credibility to them if you're caught faking it. So knowing your clients well and know your local market well. And the third and the most important thing is to pick the right mentors to fit your mindset. I cannot stress this enough because this is an element that most people overlook. Being new to a market where most of the successful agents have spent 25 to 30 years working means you need their support to get it going. The right open house, the right local events, the right listings, it's all things they have access to. And you have to respect that. So you have to be willing to learn from their success and incorporate your twist on it to, and make it your own. So, but without the right mentor, breaking into the new market isn't easy. So for every person who's trying to help you succeed, there will be 10 people wishing you fail because you're taking away from their business. So you have to make sure that one person supporting you has the ability to negate those 10 negative minds and can push you through the right doors to success. So for me, those were the factors that helped me build my success into this new market. Uh, that that was a uh, very um, your very very good answer. Very thorough. I appreciate that. And you talk about you know for everyone that wants to help you, ten want to drag you down. And so we tell that to agents all the time. You know, I say garbage in, garbage, and most people say garbage out. I say no, it's garbage in, garbage stays. So you're a product of your yeah. environment. So you know you, you might have negative Nancy or negative Nick at your office that's always complaining about this that and the other thing or you know the, the fees uh, the brokerage the office is too cold it's too hot the copier is too slow you know just the negative vibes and, and just the, you, you know can 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 wane on you so having uh, the right mindset the proper tools support and systems um, is huge and that's that's what we try to teach you know through free resources like this podcast and and our our blog and our Facebook page, but also through our more advanced strategies with our trainings and our designation. So thank you for yeah. that. Oh, no, thank you. I mean, just, you know, for giving uh, free knowledge to other agents and you're really helping other agents to be successful. So really, thank you, Michael. Oh, you're, you're absolutely welcome. So the last question I have for you is, is more on the humor side, but um, do you have like a funny, uh, you know, funny memorable story or experience in real estate that comes to mind that you wouldn't mind sharing with the listeners? <laughs> yes, I do. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, um, yeah, sure. So I have a recent memorable experience with a celebrity client that is always going to stick with me. And um, I was their listing agent and my client's property was already in escrow at that time. And I was walking into a cafe to grab a coffee and the attendant was busy looking at their TV screen. So I signaled them that I was ready to order and they laughed and mentioned that there is an athlete on TV trying to attack his um, delivery driver. And I spun around and could not believe what I was seeing. There he was, my client, and one of his associates uh, yelling at the truck driver who loaded the truck at this very listing three days ago, and the news anchor was talking about possible jail time. So, oh, my God, the whirlwind of calls right. to lawyers and talent agents and escrow officers, and I was trying to get answers as to what happens if my client goes to jail. So let me tell you, it was a hectic 24 hours. And I don't think I'll ever forget the look on my face tearing up the TV wondering why or how could this even be happening. So we all have our stories in real estate, and that's surely one of mine. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. yeah. No, it is. And, 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 you know, yeah. you, you, brought, you brought up celebrity. I'm going to throw in an eighth question. Any, any recommendations for those clients that or those agents listening that – um, any tips or advice when dealing with, uh, yes. you know, a high-profile client, a celebrity, a professional athlete, an actor, um, any do's and don'ts, and, you know, just, and again, I, I'm putting you on the spot, but, but if, if there's just something that just stands out, any any advice that comes to mind? Um, yes. There's two things that I would say keep in mind, you know, um, 
celebrity clients really care about their privacy. So we got to really respect that. And, um, you know, and, and, and that's that. Like, if you're representing somebody famous, you don't really need to go announce that, you know. And, you know, you just, just keep their privacy, everything, you know. Um, second of all, I mean, because, you know, like, when I was representing this client, so many people were asking me about, you know, their future career, you know, oh, you know, you know, a bunch of things like, oh, which team are they going to play in now? I mean, I, I, I don't know. And even if I knew, I wouldn't disclose anything. And second thing is, um, you know, people might think it's it's so much fun working with celebrity client. I think it's a lot of learning experiences and every client is different and they have a lot of needs. You have to cater to a lot of needs. You have to work 10 times extra hard to work with a celebrity client. Um, yeah. So I just want to let you know, it's a lot of handholding. That's that's uh, great advice. Um, so just like anything in life, as an agent, you have to uh, you have to weigh the pros and the cons. Do the pros outweigh the cons? I get a- agents ask me all the time, Mike, I'm, I'm, I'm happy in my lane. My lane is entry level or starter homes and average price homes. And I do tell you, the magic happens when you step out of your comfort zone. And so I, I challenge agents to add more high-end and luxury homes to their portfolio. And so, you know, don't, don't, you know, don't be... You know, do your due diligence, be comfortable with your unique value proposition, respect privacy, do what you say you're going to do, trust, you know, just like in Meet the Parents with Robert De Niro, that movie from 20 plus years ago, you know, the circle of trust, you, you know, you, you, you can break it easily. It's difficult to build and you can break it easily. Yes. So if somebody's got a referral in that Palo Alto, uh, you know, Silicon Valley, or they want to connect with you, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, you know, I'm very active on social media, Facebook, um, you know, so, uh, you know, and and uh, Instagram and uh, my email address, maria.abzal650 at gmail.com. But really the quickest way is to just send me a text message. My phone number is 650-561-6073 and I'll be at your service. And we do residential and commercial as well. Oh, that's great. And we'll make sure we post this again. Again, this podcast, like all our podcasts, they're on iTunes, they're on Spotify, they're on Stitcher, or you can always go to luxurylistingpodcast.com where you can listen to the podcast. Sometimes we include some downloads and that sort of thing. Um, So I really appreciate uh, your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're, You're absolutely welcome. Again, if you guys have any questions about real estate, luxury, uh, you have a a suggestion for a future topic or a guest and you want to nominate or or send me an email on it, my email is michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. Again, uh, a resource we have out there is our book. It's on Amazon, Luxury Listing Specials, Luxury Listing Specials, and check out LuxuryListingSpecials.com for more information on our designation. We have our podcast and our blog. We also have free resources on that website. And uh, we're doing some pretty exciting things. We're launching new stuff. Check back. And again, till next time, really appreciate everybody's time. Keep raising the bar, help a neighbor, be a good person, and make somebody's day. My name is Michael Lafito and continue to prove others wrong. Take care. Mm-hmm.